So it's Farmer Brad and Mark Brim here in the Farmer Brad Mobile, and we just accomplished Sober October. So we wanted to uh, document our thoughts and feelings after 30 days of no Mountain Dew for me, no alcohol, and what about you, Mark? No alcohol, no coffee. Uh, I only had water, sparkling water, and hot tea for the month, except I did get two six-packs of uh, non-alcoholic Coors. The beginning of the month was kind of warm, and so it was a nice treat. And as a result of on the first day, I forgot <laughs> I had a Pepsi. I ended up going to November 1st uh, just to cover my bases. And uh, this last weekend, I had um, a beer, which was very nice. And I, I had missed drinking a beer. What was the alcohol content of the beer? Uh, I think it was like 7%. Nice. I had a 6.8% Friday night. I had no coffee Friday. And I had a 6.8% beer Friday night. Two beers on Saturday. I can't remember the alcohol content. And I've had two cups of coffee since then. And today is November 4th, by the way. Yes. So, yeah. What I learned was that caffeine was uh, affecting me in so many negative ways. When I went off caffeine, I went crazy, I was tired, I couldn't think straight. Now, uh, I found over the course of the probably two weeks it took to recover, I started thinking a little more clearly, I started sleeping a lot better, and I was just genuinely a little calmer. And so that was without coffee. Uh, I'm sure without alcohol, uh, that was the same thing, probably the better sleep and stuff. And uh, since going off of it, uh, I really haven't uh, had the urge to uh, to uh, have anything to drink in the evening. I usually really enjoy a drink in the evening, but that 31 days created the habit that I to where it's not something I seek out anymore. And, and I didn't think that would be the result. I thought November 1st, boom, I'm going straight to that refrig refrigerator for a beer. But... How about Mountain Dew? Have you had a Mountain Dew yet? Uh, so I don't think I want to push my luck with trying uh, Mountain Dew. I did today have a Pepsi, um, but I feel like um, dealing with Mountain Dew is kind of like handling venomous snakes and just uh, <laughs> waiting to get bit by it. So I don't really want to touch that stuff with a 10-foot pole at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to stay away from that as long as I can. And I'm going to probably switch to decaffeinated coffee, maybe the occasional cup of coffee, but I definitely don't want to get to where I was before, which was a pot in the morning and sometimes uh, another three or four cups in the afternoon. I don't want to get there, um, but otherwise, it really was um, a better experience than I thought it would be, because uh, I really look forward first cup of coffee in the morning and I really look forward to just enjoying a nice cocktail in the evening but I started new habits and uh, so sparkling water is just something nice and busy and refreshing and uh, now that's not to say that as we get into the holidays as I mentioned in the last video I may want to drink a little more I strongly dislike the holidays um, and, and the amount of socializing I have to do um, especially Hoosier family. Your family's a Hoosier family, right? Yeah. I don't know if it's a Hoosier thing, but, you know, Hoosier families and holiday gatherings, and it's like, hey, come over here. And, it, you know, in place of me asking any relevant questions about your life, let me tell you a story that you've heard numerous times throughout your life, the details of which change each time. But I will continue on this story, even as you acknowledge that you've heard it before. That requires a drink to get through that. Yeah, so um, <laughs> one, one thing that I was looking forward to during Sober October was um, additional creativity mm. and uh, yeah. vividness. Uh, I, I didn't quite get that. Uh, I mean, there were some times where I noticed I was kind of like jittery uh, two or three in the afternoon and was needing uh, some sweet tea or coffee to help get me through the rest of the day. Um, but I feel like it was a big step uh, away from the Mountain Dew. And um, we're just navigating more. Looks like uh, probably Vectrin is 
out doing something with uh, gas pipes, maybe. Mm. What about, you know, Mountain Dew has a pretty high caffeine content, right? So did, yeah. you, did you find yourself sleeping better and, and being more patient without without the Mountain Dew? Not, not really. Um, the biggest difference was uh, financial and uh, just trying to kill that crave mm. every every day. I think I noticed the biggest thing that's happened to me lately is going to bed at a decent time and waking up naturally and feeling good when I do get up. That uh, and, and I don't know since I quit coffee and alcohol at the same time which one was to blame, but I'm putting a lot of the blame on the coffee because that's what I drank a lot more of. So. I don't know. Uh, Friday, no, last Thursday, in preparation for November 1st, I, I uh, brought, bought some uh, vodka. Thought I'd enjoy some vodka and soda. And it's uh, really not on purpose. I just, I haven't opened it yet. I uh, haven't had the need for it. Yesterday, I was working a lot outside. And uh, when I came in the house, I didn't really have the interest to, uh, to have a drink or, or anything like that. And that's not even coming from this from the angle of, of even thinking I drank too much. Just the fact that there was something that I enjoyed and, and um, had been enjoying consecutively for many years straight. What happens if I stop that thing? So I kind of did that last year with pizza rolls. Uh, and I don't really miss them much. Although if I were to buy some pizza rolls, I know I would, I would go crazy on them again. And so I don't know if that's going to be the same thing or not. But... I guess the biggest lesson for me was coffee, even though that's not a big part of Sober October for a lot of people. I went ahead and cut out the caffeine, and I, my life seems to be better without caffeine. And I, I have young children, so patience is really needed a lot of times, and I, I noticed that the, those, um, those qualities are, are enhanced without caffeine. And usually you're the one driving in your truck. This is interesting. Talking, I like so being the passenger. Wanted to try it something nice. a little different. Daydreaming a little bit. So the lesson learned here was 31 days without something and you realize you don't need it or that caffeine is evil or that... I don't know what the lesson was. Here. Well, I, I think it's mainly just to see whether or not you can yeah. and then gain some benefits and then just know what you need to stay away from for the future. I've got to ask, weigh-ins. Did you weigh yourself at the beginning and the end of the month? Cause no, because uh, there was one year in my life where I weighed myself every single day, mm. and it really was a wash. Um, it was not beneficial. Now, I feel a little bit lighter. The goal is to be healthy, and I'm not quite there yet, uh, but I'd like to get there. I, I did out of <clears throat> curiosity or vanity. I weighed myself day one, and I weighed myself, I weighed myself on October 1st, and I weighed myself on November 1st. And nothing, nothing really changed. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is... is <laughs> I wasn't like, looking for anything to change, but I was curious. Would I eat more sweets in, in lieu of alcohol or something and gain weight? Or was uh, the alcohol causing me? Or was the coffee causing me to bloat? What was... Nothing changed, so... Yeah. Yeah. Well, everyone out there, have a wonderful day. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, make sure to check out Mark's channel. There's a truck video that's going to come out sometime. Yes. Bye.